uh, uh, sometimes uh, have a wide array of uses in, uh, in uh, various geochemical studies because of that sort of garbage can-like affinity. <laughs> they, they are very accepting of all things. Just attached to me. Just attached to me. I like it. It's a, good, it's a good attitude. It's a good approach to life. Oh, yeah. Hornblits are great. And good approach to being a rock, too, I guess. Yeah. Hey, Val. Quick question. Um, so we are just off of Waypoint 5. We're like, it looks like just like kind of downslope from it. I don't know if we wanted to climb right up there to see what was up, or I don't know how important that was, or if we um, should just kind of track along. Yeah, how about, how about we uh, work our way up toward the, uh, the ridge crest? Okay. It's yeah, we might see a little bit more up there. Is the uh, how how well is the uh, uh, bathymetry matching uh, what we're actually ground truthing? Um, seemingly better than the dive yesterday. Okay, phew. So I mean, I think it's just a matter of kind of going up here. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, that that was a little strange yesterday, but I'm I'm just placing that on a resolution issue for now. Yeah. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. It it you know we're we're. Uh, we're shooting sonar uh, blips at uh, features that are, um, you know, a mile or two down. So uh, there's there's only so much resolution we can get. So when there are like really fine uh, uh, features, like that you're talking on the meter or tens of the ten meter scale, uh, uh, you're not necessarily going to see that in the bathymetric data that uh, you receive. So that ridge uh, in our last dive seemed like. At its widest point, it might have been 10 meters. <laughs> it was so yeah. narrow. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a very narrow ridge. That yeah, was amazing. Yeah, part of this one has uh, a pretty narrow looking ridge, too. So, see, it's uh, not quite knife like at the beginning, and then it widens out toward uh, the summit. Oh, very cool. The summit region. So, we're tracking from north to south on the island on the sea yeah. today. Cool. Yeah, and this was uh, something that uh, Virginia suggested that we do during dive planning because uh, we've been we've been hitting a lot of southern ridges, so this is a little bit different, a little I'm bit of a different direction. Kind of what, yeah, what the directionality orientation. See if there's yeah. presents us with any uh, different differences mm -hmm. and things to observe. I like it. Good idea. We're still seeing a lot of rocks. <laughs> it's 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 been a little interesting with the uh, with the last few dives. Just the, you know. We, we started off with so much biology a little further north, and then uh, in the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge re region, these smaller seamounts, um, they, they, they uh, are not as um, densely populated as uh, what we've gotten used to from uh, the Liliokalani Ridge. I've been sneaking in, see him on your camera. Just no, you're fine. Okay. I, I, uh, you're fine. Okay. From a geological perspective, Val, I know there's a lot more questions than answers, but does that, does potential age of the seamount, given that it's so many tens of millions of years old either way, is that going to really impact the ability for these biological communities to form? Or at that age, they sort of function as very similar substrate. They're going to likely be attracting communities at uh, in similar ways it's just kind of luck of the draw some seamounts get uh, really robust biological communities others maybe you know i do not know I, I would imagine since uh the northwest hawaiian ridge around here is on the order of uh, a few tens of millions of years old uh and the older cretaceous seamounts that we're interested in are um you know on the order of 80 to 100 um i, I did, maybe depending on the condition of the substrate but there's so many other factors involved too and yeah. uh, the, uh like the the life that we're looking at here is probably uh what on the order of decades to hundreds of years correct so, yeah yeah so there, it may not be so different in that respect yeah there have been some studies recently on um communities on different ages of lava flows on the same seamount um and on the scale of i think uh like decades to thousands of years there are differences by the age of the lava flow but that also makes sense because it's also like settling right um one of the things too um that you find is is kind of interesting though too um you know some of these some of these seamounts are, are quite close to each other is that a sea pen oh sorry oh i didn't i didn't yeah sorry i was actually looking at uh at someone but um 
Sorry, yeah. Uh, uh, that, it could be a C pen. I'm not. Can we get a zoom on that? It looks like it's actually on the, um, the think, rock and you're right. has a different morphology, but. Okay. If we could get a zoom on that, that'd still be great because um, we haven't seen something like it. Uh, oh, but good eye. Did I see something uh, in the chat, maybe from Masako, that there's a there's a certain type of sea pen we might be interested in sampling? Correct. Yes. Apparently, I'm on a black coral watch today. Yeah. Nice. Look at you go. <laughs> interesting that's branching. An, that is an interesting that. branching. That is a that is a that is a different one. Is this full zoom? I got a little bit for you. That's it. Ah, thanks, thanks, Amber. Fantastic. <laughs> Beautiful. Excellent. All right, well, thanks great. for that. Yeah, thank you so much. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. Um, yeah, I the words were coming out of my mouth. Um, um, we were talking about substrate ages and uh, biological growth, um, mm -hmm. but those were, I think, younger lava flows you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, We're working on it. There was there was a there was a thought process behind that, and I'm not. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh no. Um, th that was important. Yeah, um, I know operational stuff. Yeah, but still, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Valid. You're from the Midwest. I'll take it as a Midwestern sorry. Yeah, um, that, that's the Michigan sorry, which is basically the Canada sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, we were talking about ages of seamounts in relation to different biological communities, right? So um, on the small scale of like you know um, hundreds, thousands of years of age, I think that can make a difference. On the millennial um, scale, I think the the lifespan and the the distance that some of these organisms can travel actually makes that they're very more similar, right? Okay. Um, but one of the things is these or these seamounts are actually quite close to each other. Um, and these, you know, don't forget the, even though these are all like, you know, we're on the deep sea floor. We're, you know, how, how deep are we right now? Oh, Two, I don't have it up anywhere. 21 to 2200 meters. Um, hang on a yeah. sec. Um, 2179. Yeah, yeah so thank we, you. E we're 2180 meters deep on the sea floor looking at these organisms, but a lot of them have um, you know, uh, okay. part of their life cycle is actually in the water column, you know, whether that be their, the gametes or whether that is the actual larvae or, you know, juvenile stage, um, you know, they're able, they can travel, they, they can physically travel distances. Whether they do is another story, Right. but there is the capability for these organisms to move. Um, and so, um, you know, you can see these connections, um, and so Ooh, that might that be might what be we're a looking pen. for. Yes. Ooh. Are we able to pause for a second here? Yeah, and that would, okay. if, if that is, that would be... Um, oh, wow. Numero 10. 10. It is, yeah. yeah. Okay. But also one thing to note are things not just like the, the substrate age, but like sedimentation, and also these, these are deeper... Uh, somewhat uh, small seamounts. So we're not quite getting into that uh, depth range w that the Lulio Kalanis were hitting where um, we were seeing really abundant uh, 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 populations and communities. Right. So I think There's that was closer to what, 1,300 meters? Um, yeah, we were at, actually, I mean, oh, that's that, beautiful. The, the deeper community, the, the really abundant ones were at like 1,000 meters. So, um, I mean, that, and that's, you know, there's so many other very important variables as well. Um, you know, as you change in depth, you're changing temperatures, um, you're changing oxygen, you're changing food availability, mm -hmm. you know, and then as you move um, around in the ocean, you're changing your um, water mass that you're in, yeah. you know, a part of. So yeah, it's very do important. We, do we want to collect this? Um, Is this what we're looking for? I do not know. Okay, um, I had this up somewhere. Sebastian chiming in again. Ah, Sebastian. welcome, Sebastian. Um, uh, Kukui, there should be a tally mark above the permit. Yeah, there is, but is this the sea pen you guys have been seeing? Yes, so okay. this should be sea pen 10. So any sea pen after this one, you okay. guys can collect. Okay, yeah. After this one. All right, Great. thanks, Sebastian. Thank you, Wonderful Sebastian. Sebastian, mahalo. Of course. All right, thanks, thanks for the pause, front row. 
Um, yeah, let's let's uh, keep tracking our way uh, back up. There are very specific stipulations in the permit about what we're allowed to sample, how many, under what circumstances, and uh, the whole team committed to making sure we do a great job honoring that uh, mm -hmm. that permission and that permit that's been granted by those who are stewards and caretakers of Papa Oh, we got a we got a swimming sea cucumber. Ooh. Oh, hey! Wow, wonderful. Whoa. Just boogieing there in the water column. Yeah. I love how they swim. You got moves. Wow. You got moves, little buddy. Wow. Oh, that's fun. I know. I've been trying to get everybody to dan have a dance party, too, my friend. <laughs> I know. I appreciate it. Need all the support I can get. So on that uh, ship to shore with those second graders? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing this to emulate the Dumbo squids to wave Aww. high and by, and it was so great. Very Aww. cute. I know they love that. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. What's that? Oh, oh it's it's visiting oh, us. Oh, he's on our porch. Hey, buddy. Hey. Want to go for a ride? He's like, I heard dance Actually. party. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Take a nap. Okay, Asako's coming in with a little more information about the sea pen. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, let's see, the one we want to collect. Paul's count is less than 15. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense, yeah. I'm looking at a picture now. And for, yeah, we'll have to, we might have to. Oh, it's a ride. ride. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> My little hood ornament. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> can we get a, can we get a Holothurian hood ornament for our <laughs> Kirk? <laughs> has a friend right there too. It's another one. Hmm. I wonder if it wants a ride too. more distance than it would in three months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kukui, um, what, what kind of samples have we collected so far? And like, what was the last uh, rock collection depth? Um, so, so far we have um, another Chrysogorgia uh, slash Rumilagorgia, uh, possibly. Okay. Um, we also have two rocks and three Niskins. Awesome. What's up? Yeah, well, I'm, we're coming this way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's hard to count. Yeah, I'm having a hard time trying to count the polyps on it. Yeah. And as for the last rock sample, I think it was taken at around 2284 meters. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Mahalo, Kukui. Mahalo. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we get for rocks around uh, 2000. All right, so for number of polyps, I have, I can see one half of the polyps that are on this. Um, I, I took a still cap and I um, am looking at it zoomed in on. And I can see what looks like um, seven polyps on this one side. So there are at least 14. Okay. So I, I do think that this is not the one that, um, just because. Ooh, what is this? Looks like a another. Oh, uh, it's got it's got a. Those 
Uh, yes, so the, yeah, um, anemones do have that. Um, okay. I'll double check in the other Corallomorph variants, but um, most anemones have that, uh, in an oral disc. Okay. Um, but the Corallomorph variants, the differentiation between those two types, the one that's a Corallomorph variant looks more like an anemone than the okay. one that's anemone. So that's why I made that differentiation there. Okay. This is looking like a pretty um, standard um, anemone. Of course, now that I say that, I'll um, probably be wrong. But um, I totally oh. agree with you. Thank you. Yeah. I think you're. I think you're right with anemone. Think. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it it looks like an actinostylidae. Um, okay. Uh, anemone with two or three. Oh uh, yeah. Tentacle levels I see. on it. Great. Not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's nice. We take the wins where we can get them. Absolutely. It'll, it'll take some time for me to pick up the nuance of that, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get it eventually. Almost to the top of this little uh, small peak on the on the ridge, on the way up. And this definitely looks much more of a, like a polyku. Yeah. When you look at the topographical map, you just see like this really proud, steep face of a cliff. And this little outcrop on the ridge kind of looking down over it pretty awesome just like some of our ridge hikes back home yeah when i've been seeing all of these dive uh summaries and the topographical maps that come with each plan it's looks exactly like many of our mountains on our islands it it's hard to believe that it's underwater you know at, at these depths um, so far northwest. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that like a s stalked crinoid? What are, we, what are we looking at? The, uh, the that yellow stalk right here. <laughs> stalk crinoid? Yeah, I was wondering if it might have been. It is yellow. Yeah. There are a lot of them that are yellow. Yeah. I, I'm just not. I'm well, used I to seeing if that's more, more of arms. The Chrysogorgia, too, that they found earlier. Oh, Maybe. in the back? Actually, we just passed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Such a bright color. Wow. It is. It's very striking. Yes. Has that been eaten? I think that is a stalked crinoid, but it looks like it's missing it's some things. If it's a stalked crinoid, it's pretty sad. Do you, you think a sea star got to it? No idea. Okay. I, I have... Not a clue. Mm. Get ready. Get ready for a new gallery coming out on NautilusLive.org. It's deep sea crime scenes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Who ate you? This is how oh I spend my, my days on board the ship. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely a mystery. Solving puzzles and mysteries. CSI Papa Hanamukuaki. Start. Kukui. Thanks for the zoom. <laughs> Kukui's the muscle. Yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys are too kind. Too kind. Shut up. Looks like we've got a somewhat planar branched Crestogorcha on the left there. Yeah. Wow. Fun to see her. Hercules navigating this landscape up here from the Atalanta cam. If you're only tuned into camera number one, you might want to jump over and look at the quad cam or camera number two. That crinoid looks a little happier. I think that may be, a, no, I may be wrong. Yeah, can we zoom on this? Oh, 
it's got a little hydra growth in one part. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, oh, it does. Planar Chrysogorgid. Good call. We don't see these very often, do we? No, actually we don't, um, which is something um, uh, Asaka was talking about. Um, the fact that uh, this is uh, potentially uh, Chrysogorgia, Chry the only planar um, Chrysogorgia that we know of is Chrysogorgia Chrysis. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Are we thinking about a collection? Uh, Asako thinks maybe. Ah, Chrysogorgia crisis is multiplanar. Oh. So that's why planar Chrysogorgias are very. Um, so this is truly unusual. Well, there are some. There are some planar Chrysogorgids. Okay. Um, I'm less familiar. This is it is it is a very unique looking. Oh yeah, I'm looking at the ID guide now and Chrysogorgia Chryseus. It does look very s similar, but it is 3D, whereas this one is okay. It's different. I'm looking at Atlanta Cam right now, and uh, just off oh, to gorgeous. our right is a really tall stocked sponge. Wow. Yeah. Mm. No, I think. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, front row, we're uh, uh, trying okay. to figure out what to do here. Oh, I see. Chrysogorgia is almost bushy. Chryseus is almost bushy. Okay. Whereas this is truly like a single plane. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's, um, there's another Chrysogorgid uh, day uh, tax of that has planar... Um, but it's a different, the polyps look different. And okay. It's very um, much sparse, sparse polyp branching and um, very different branching style. So mm -hmm. this is pretty unique. I will, I will say that. Um, yeah, Sako also notes this is much larger than a typical Chrysogorgia. So mm -hmm. this is something different, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've seen um, many of these. Sebastian chiming in again. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Sebastian. I've been summoned. Um, <laughs> we have been seeing a lot of these planar um, chrysogorgids, a lot smaller. This is certainly the biggest one I've seen. Oh, um, you have? I've been seeing a lot more smaller planar ones. Even Chris what seemed a little bit confused by it when earlier on. Okay. So take that as you will. Okay. Let so you're saying that, you, do you think you've seen... Um, yeah, do you think the smaller ones were like a single plane or were they like kind of bushy? I was pretty sure they were a single plane. Okay. Okay. Do pretty you think, confident about it. Do you think this would be worth a collection? Um, I am not the coral biologist, yeah. but I've seen a lot of these, certainly more than 10. Okay. Okay. Honestly, if, if we are seeing, if we have been seeing a lot of them on this dive, um, and we haven't seen, I have not seen anything like this on previous dives. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm going to trust the word of the to, biologist yeah, here. Yeah, due to the number and the frequency that they've said that they've seen them, I think it would be worth a collection, and um, it looks like a Sako. Yeah, a Sako votes yeah. for collection. Okay, yeah. uh, could we set up uh, to do a coral snip? All right. All right, Checking thank, out. thanks for your patience. Thank thanks, you, Sebastian. Thanks, Sebastian. Mahalo, Sebastian. Yeah. Sebastian. Thanks for your patience, front yeah. row. This is what we're here yeah. for. No, that, yeah, that is fantastic. It's, um, you know, with the watch changes, you never really know what someone else has been seeing. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, for this collection, do we want several uh, branches, kind of yeah. like the last one? Several yesterday? branches would be good. Um, it would probably be something like, um, I mean, once we zoom in, but I think uh, someone yesterday was mentioning that you need several branches to note like the whirling pattern because I think that was Chris, maybe. Yeah, I think Chris was mentioning yesterday on one of the other um, samples that we took. So, 
Um, yeah. When we zoom in, we can uh, we can assess further. Snip and slurp, or you want to? I think I think I think probably. snip and slurp. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like maybe one of these branches or that might be right. Yeah, the, like the a, best ones to get to. Okay. Yeah, I mean it. It kind of depends on. I think we should get a good zoom on it before we go in, and then um, look at the branching and okay that sort of thing. Yeah. So if you think that this sort of section here might be easy to grab, um, that would that'd probably be good. Um, as long as we can get, we want to make sure that we do get some of this main stock that's here. Yeah, that looks great. Is uh, sample jar one open? Yep, sample jar one is open. Okay. Oh. Um, um, you can also put it in the bio box too if it won't fit in the, the slurp. Asako said it should be fine. You want to try the slurp first or you want to put it in the sample box? I'm sort of committed there. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. I mean, I'm here in silence. Silence is always bad. What are you guys saying? Are, are you worried that it might, like, just, like, tear what, it up too much? In this um, no, I, th I mean, I think with the... So I personally think that the slurp is probably the better option because um, this should be very floaty and I know that the thrusters get into the bio boxes and can... It's at 80 right now. Um, you see it's so yeah, suck it. If we were yeah. to put in the bio box, so that would be the last bio box, so we wouldn't have to open it again. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, so maybe that would work. Option. Yeah, it's it's sucking. I mean, do you want to do 100? <laughs> see if it'll go? It's at 80 well, right no, now. No, I'm not letting go of it until I hear We put our Chrysogorgid in the front box because of that reason. Okay. I, I'd be worried about that um, potentially coming back out if we open yeah. the bio box. Mm -hmm. That's also yeah. another thing. So what do we do? Mm. What do we do? Is it not fitting in this? I'm sorry. I'm I'm not I'm sure. Not letting go of it until you tell me what to do with it. Um, I. It's just it's a it's at pretty high suction right now and it's just not going up. Well, no, okay. I thought he, he's not, not letting, letting go. go. Yeah. As soon as you tell me to let go of it, I'll let go. Suction's I yeah try suction. Suction is great. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh. Yeah, uh, no, nope, it'll go, it'll fit, it'll be fine. Okay. We will, so there's still lots of good branching pattern there. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. still sucking? Yep, it's at 100 right now. 
great, juicy there. There, goes. there we go. Professional. Right. Yep. Me, nice. Uh, try to see awesome. If I can purge it. Go through. Oh, I see yep. some. It's starting to come in. Turn it off while you're doing that. Oh, there it is right there. You can see it right there in the corner. Oh, yeah. Can I have it on? Okay. 50. See it no more. I don't know. Let me turn it off. Let's see what it does. Some more pieces. Mm -hmm. We may have to fish it out of the hose later. Try. Are we okay with that? Or it seems like we kind of broke a piece off here, and we can yeah, we do. get it because we broke it anyway. Yeah, it does look like we've got some in the in the jar. Um, but do you want a bigger pieces? Yeah, it looks like there's more in there as well. Yeah. There's more coming. Um, you say that's enough? Um, what what is the what's the entire question? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, I was wondering if you had enough in the jar for you were talking about wanting to get the bigger branches. Yeah, I could see you. So that, those are all little bits pieces and then I was saying we broke the coral anyway so like if we just sample a bigger piece and put it in the box mm, I hear what you're saying um the so you're we're thinking that the slurp it's not going to get into the jar or it, it is doesn't appear to be getting into the jar okay okay yeah. I'm letting I mean, it. We have little pieces, right? There's yeah, I'm letting yeah. it settle, and I'm trying to get it to well, now. It's like it's hanging up into the mesh in the top, probably. But okay. We haven't seen any, you know, bigger pieces. But in the process of sampling, I broke the coral, so the main body is not really attached anymore, anyway. So. Ah, yes, I see. Okay. Um, I will chat for a second. Is the bit that's stuck in the hose still usable as a sample, if it's able to be retrieved? Uh, 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 uh. Hang on a moment, Catalina. Okay. Do you want me to keep trying? See if you can look at the hose with the... Okay. That camera. We could also try to move the jar a little bit and then swing it back in. Sometimes it gets hung up right at the entrance to the jar, right? Anyway. Um. Oh my god, I do not like this thing. I don't see it in there. So. Is the light on? Uh, turn the down light on. I don't think it is. It's on. It is, okay. 
You said to rotate it, maybe so if we'll dislodge it. Yeah, I mean, I'll grab the hose again and then uh, stretch it out while you look at it. All right, I, I think we're okay with what we have. We'll just have to try to fish it out of the hose later. Because okay. it looks like uh, it was a fairly large sample, and we didn't see too many pieces come into the, the jar, so there's still most of it that is presumably intact, well, just uh, stuck. Try and give it a shake again, and then rotate the jar, and then take it back in. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. sometimes rotating the jars can help. Okay. All right, rotate it. Well, no, are you sucking? Not yet. But worst case scenario, we just don't use slurp again if we uh, this dive if uh, necessary. Yeah, it's slurping. Let me see. Yeah. Turn it down. Um, I, I think we're okay. We 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 know we have the sample. It went somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let me let me try rotating it real yeah, quick. Just, you need bump it. Just try to really lightly bump it. Uh, I have seen where the flush jar has become a sample jar in cases like this too. I think it's in there. Yeah. It's okay. Stuck somewhere. Yeah, I think it's probably hung up in the right at the entrance to the jar. I think so, yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll uh We'll figure out how to retrieve that later. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least the hose is clear the whole way now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was an important feature. That we yeah, getting it stuck midway would be another, uh, a, a more complicated issue. Well, it used to, it used to be that the hose was opaque. You couldn't see things that were, and the hose used to run way back in the back and then come up forward again. Ooh. Okay. So yeah. This is, this is you clear the whole way, so you can. Yeah, yeah that, that definitely nice. helps. <laughs> that was that was something we just did during the uh, rebuild. Okay, so we're moving on. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to move on. Yeah. Thank you for the thank collection. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Kukui, would that have been sample zero nine six? Yep, zero nine six. Perfect. Thank you. All right, onward and upward. All right, we'll, we'll want to make a note of the slurp status for uh, the next watch. Yeah. I told them that there's going to be some still stuck in the hose. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I love these tall sponges. The Calophagus, I think. Yeah. 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 The Rosellid sponges. Yeah, there's a really big one in the back, too. Mm -hmm. Saw that in Atlanta Cam. It's like a. Uh, Polyopagon, maybe? Oh, there's another something large there, too. Not sure what that is yet. Looks like the current's picked up a little bit here. Yeah. It's, it's not bad yet. Yeah, no worries.
Yeah, you got me tight. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna be heading straight down that way. Oh, that's spectacular. Good place for large sponges. We're uh, looking at some uh, pillow basalt flows here, uh, nestled among the sediments. Sponge looks like it's glowing in the Atlanta can. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's a cool shot. Fascinating. Yeah, if yeah. Uh, you're uh, if you're uh, watching us online, check out the quad channel. Uh, look at Atlanta cam, where it looks like the sponge is just kind of glowing, like Catalina said. Wow. Uh. Beautiful hu'akai mm -hmm. sponge. It's yeah. gorgeous. Wow, yeah. Can you turn the laser lights off? I got them. Thanks, Zach. Awesome, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, and it just looks like holes until you zoom in, and then you can see that it's more than just like you know, part of its uh, uh, water circulation system, you just get those really intricate interwoven patterns. Oh yeah, no, the 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 weave, actually, I like that a lot. The weave of a yeah. sponge can tell you a lot um, in between the spicules. Ooh, I'm gonna use that, the weave. Do it. <laughs> the weave. Oh, that's a stunning um, shot in still cam. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that's why I asked for the laser lights off. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and all the you can see the the, the brittle stars, the ophiroids that are on on these. And they're so small, impossibly small organisms that live um, within within such a large specimen of a sponge. Yeah, and some of these you can actually sometimes you can actually see them living inside of uh, these these voids in the sponge, and yeah, they're pretty much there their entire life cycle, right? Some of them can be, yeah. I know. Um, I know there's several shrimp species that will live it just, you know, in a single sponge. Um, I'm sure some of these, you know, um, there's there's a certain there can be a benefit to you know having your food and, and habitat just you know your your refuge and food in a single spot. But um, I'm not sure about these brill stars. Okay. Mm -hmm. They could just be juveniles, or this could be their adult size, and they do, in fact, just stay here forever. But I'm, I'm not actually certain if there have been many studies on, you know, um, the associates of sponges. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you Beautiful. so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Yes. So, um, do you have any any sort of sense of what that interweaving, that you know, the, the weave of the sponge can tell us? Um, uh, one, could we um, could we get the laser lights back on? Yeah. Oh, right. Thank Thanks. you so much. Um, and I mean, the weaving of the sponge—that's that's sort of like the branching of the coral, right? Something that we talk about that is very. Um, okay. It's different for different groups of sponges. You know, you can kind of see the difference between the euplectalids and the furaids, right? Yeah. Um, the furaids have very bubbly sort of, you know, branching, or er, nope, weave so, patterns. So and, yeah, you yeah, know, these, exactly. this is, um, what do we say? This is a polyopagon? No. But, you know, this you can see much, uh, you know, a, a particular type of um, hole pattern in the weave of this probably euplectelid mm -hmm. sponge um so yeah polyopagon yeah nice yeah that's the closest one very cool okay fantastic 
Thanks, Thanks for that flying. Yeah, and then just like that, back into sediments and uh, debris. So, lots of, uh, lots of meter scale change along this pathway. Mm -hmm. It's another black coral. Oh yeah, another, uh, looks like maybe a path pack use. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Enjoying the ride? Yeah. Enjoying that beautiful sponge, meter tall. It was at least a meter tall. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Very much so. So it looks like we've got a slight change in the geo geography. What do we what do we call it the other day? Um, we got some different rocks Ooh. in front of us. Um, and maybe uh, this. Oh, this could be another. Um, uh, Calophagus? Uh, it looks like the bolosoma. stem is coming from underneath it, so I'm going to go with a bolosoma. Okay. Um, well, maybe yeah. a smaller polyopagon again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are these pebbles on top of some sediment? Yeah. Is that what we're looking at right here? Looks like pebbles. Um, okay, so broken up fragments of, yeah. of larger rock yeah, from doesn't elsewhere. I don't know. We haven't really found any nodule fields, like true nodule fields, so far in this in this area. I, I don't recall that we found any last year either in the Lilio colonies. Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of angular shards. So these are definitely rock fragments here. Hmm. Very cool. Let's see. So yeah, we're uh, a little, just a little bit. Um, yeah, we're basically on waypoint five right now, and uh, so so we're kind of on the top of a uh, local high and moving into a saddle area. So um, yeah, there's a sudden change in uh, 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 sudden change in uh, lithologic setting uh, kind of makes sense here. Mm. So this is an area where um, we're just getting a lot more sediment, a lot more rock fragments. That, Probably haven't come from too far away, and uh, uh, a little less true outcrop, except for uh, some of these large, uh, uh, these large pillow boulders. So now these boulders could they be some of what has fragmented and created these pebbles, or are they? Do you think that these are different? Um, they they're they're probably where a lot of the pedal uh, pebbles, not petals. Uh, mm -hmm. There are no flowers down here. Uh, <laughs> where a lot of the pebbles have come from. Oh, oh, we got a sea lily in front of us. Nice spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could we get a quick look at that, please? Although I could be wrong. Actually, now I'm like, it's got barnacles on it. Guessing myself. Yeah, the barnacles were throwing me off. Barnacles are good at that. Yeah, it looks like underneath this there's underneath this there's uh, probably some buried lava flows under these sediments. I can't imagine that the sediment mm. cover is terribly thick here. Yeah, probably a few inches. Oh, look at them! You can see you can see the barnacles have polyps, right? Or do, uh, what do we call them? They have arms. tentacles, arms, arms, yeah. appendages, yeah. legs. Well, look, they're hanging out. That's yeah, they are. <laughs> That's really cool. They're, they're hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're sitting on their heads, so those oh, are their right. their legs. <laughs> and it looks like another. I keep forgetting that. Um, I don't even know what that is. Anemone. Oh, looking is thing? it a five four? Oh wait, no. You said anemone looking thing. Yeah. Is it in field? It's oh, oh, I see you. Yeah. I see it right. Yeah. Right. You're right. I have no idea what that is. Can we get I a think, full zoom? I think it may be a tino. Is this? this? Oh, you. Oh, okay. fantastic. Um, Thank you for that zoom. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I think it might be a hydroid. Yeah, and a tinafore on there. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, and it's actually, that was a coral. That's a lot of roommates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's moving in real quick, so he'll be able to get a better look. Amazing. All right. Yeah, thanks for that shot. There's a lot going on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> expensive rent. Yeah. yeah, yeah expensive yeah. rent. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that prime substrate. Mm -hmm. I think the, 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 the off to the side. Oh, okay, hold on. I think the Tina 4 that we saw was a Coromorpha. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a hydroid, isn't it? Wait, 
Um, I think it's, oh yeah, it is hydroid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're, we're getting another they're, look. They're interesting looking yeah. um, hydrozoans that are non-coral like. Yeah, a uh, coral morphum and then Oh, and you can see the the legs of the barnacle here as well. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is a stunning. Yeah. Oh, and you're right. That might be a. Oh no, that's a shrimp. On yeah. the left. There's a <laughs> shrimp there. That's oh, a beautiful so cool. view. All just living together, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and the type of coral it is on, unknown. Okay. It's, a, it's yeah, another it's fairly like a large a single polyp, right? Yeah, I think it may be so, a oh, bunch Yeah, yeah. that is the hydroid, um, but underneath Oh, that's it, the hydroid, okay. Yeah, they're actually, this is all... Oh, there's the coral, okay. Yeah, they're all um, on it. top of a single coral. Got it, got it. Awesome. Yeah. Actually, it might be an. I think I see some of the black nodes. You do? That's covered by the tissue. Um, right. oh, 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 yeah, sorry. right there. there you go. Is this some sort of bamboo then? Interesting. The pops aren't looking like bamboo to me, but maybe I'm in. Maybe I could be wrong. They look a little large for bamboo, don't they? Uh, bamboos actually have very large polyps. Okay. Um, oh, my sense of scale is just yeah. off then. No, it's all good. You they just looked a little tight. scaly, like a primnoid to me, but yeah. I, I struggle. No, thank you so much thank for that you. zoom. That's very interesting. Beautiful. Yeah, fantastic. No, you gave us two amazing looks Yeah, at that. and Thanks. actually, I can look at the still cam, because that has a slightly different angle. Ah, and yes. And I can see, unless the unless the images have magically been removed, which happens <laughs> all the time. <laughs> um, hmm. Difficult. Wow. Virginia and Kuku, if you're able to make the screen for the still cam a little larger, then I can share that with our viewers as well. Yeah, can do. Oh. It yeah, is. If you're able. Yeah. This okay, one. there it is. Yeah, I think you have it smaller before. Yeah, thank you. A little bit of a sediment fan that we're moving up. Mm. Uh, it's getting slightly larger. Ah, never mind. Yeah, it is kind of interesting that you know you s we see these these organisms all hanging out directly on top of each other, right? Like, I mean, it's basically like living with like you know, your entire extended family in a one-bedroom apartment. Yeah, I mean, that <laughs> must be, like, the best Great spot analogy. in the water column right, right there. And it's, like, <laughs> how, but, like, look at all this other space. Like, what's making these different? What's making these rocks different from the others? It's so interesting to me to think about, yeah. you know, which is also one of the reasons why I, in an, uh, an opinion that I have no real back backing for, you know, so... This is, this is, you know, minimal research has gone into this, but I'm just like, what, how are they not getting benefits from each other? You know, how, how is this yeah. not a, a community or a family that's, you know, how? That's an interesting thought. You know, I some of, I mean, some of it is just like, oh, we're, you know, higher above the seafloor, so we have currents, but there are rocks, yeah. you know? And yeah, so I just, I kind of wonder you got to wonder at that point, like, what, what all is going on? And I know there's been a ton of research in bacteria that's kind of changed some thoughts on um, ecology um, and, like, mutualism uh, and, you know, the prevalence of 
of parasitism and you know our current thoughts on ecology is very much niche um, and limitation based you know uh, everything's fighting for a limited resource but what if um, that's just a Western human idea, you know, that we're all yeah. fighting for resources? I mean, I have no idea, right? Like, this is just a thought. This is a, a, a mental right. game that I play. So, but then if you're, if you take, if you take that concept out and you look at some of these things um, that they're looking at in bacteria, right? Um, how there's a high prevalence of mutualism, all these organisms that are, um, uh, all these different organ, like all these bacteria, basically are using different portions of processes to metabolize entire, you know, strings of of um, uh, chemicals. To you know, each 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 different portion produces a different type of you know chemical that another organism uses. How how maybe that mutualism is actually far more common elsewhere, and and some of these organisms here are are utilizing you know, different components. Maybe it is bacteria, maybe it's, you know, any that's sorts really of things, but I'm just sort of wondering, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. a really interesting thought experiment. I mean, that, that, sound, that sounds like a research, que research question to me. Mm -hmm. I think it would take a, it would take a it lot. It would take a lot, um, definitely. It would take a lot and it would be a lot of, in, uh, it's something that I'm not familiar with, you know? Yeah. But you know, it's just one of those things. Is like you know, we're we're considering bacteria as so different. But what if it's what if it's not? You know. I think yeah. I've uh, I think I've mentioned one of my teachers before. Her name's Toby Herslick. Uh, she's in Santa Fe, New Mexico, founder of Biomimicry for Social Innovation, and uh, they did an extensive amount of research. Uh, contributed Ooh. to an amazing. Whoa! Sorry. Ooh, look hey, at look that. at no, this is beautiful. extensive amount of research on uh, cooperation and mutualisms and finding that it's actually a, uh, a, a fundamental principle of life, far more than competing for resources as we see uh, across all taxa. Wait, where was this? Biomimicry for Social Innovation. And they published okay. an interesting white paper on, uh, on a sort of meta study of, uh, on cooperation and mutualisms between organisms and uh, Toby and the team contributed to a beautiful book called Beloved Economies. It's all about uh, economies of sharing and abundance, um, mm -hmm. coexistence. So you wow. said that was biomimicry of social? Biomimicry for social innovation, yeah. You, you and Toby would be fast friends, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming up on my autocomplete. It's that white thing. Uh, I think that's just a whole fast. Huh? Um, um, just kidding. An old fast. An old fast. <laughs> That's really interesting. I'm super excited to read that paper. Um, yeah, I think it's it's yeah. cool to start digging into the biology and, and not enough research has been done. I think it was assumed, like you were talking about mm -hmm. for so long, this kind of survival of the fittest, niche-based, comp competition-based view of of ecology and, and, and organisms relating to one another. And uh, it turns out that's Actually, it's so energy intensive for organisms to operate that way. It's not really advantageous most right, of the time. Right, yeah. Can't do it all. We got to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think it's so interesting, you know. Some, sometimes we don't, I mean, a lot of the times we don't realize our own biases, but sometimes we don't realize how much it impacts our research. It's true. Um, yeah. It's true. Oh, that's an iridogorgia in the background. There's a big iridogorgia. I think wow, I saw a this is gorgeous. By it too. Yeah, and a coral that we that was uh, tipped over long before we came up on it. Just looking at that, and then got yeah. distracted by the boulder. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is spectacular! I think these are becoming my favorite, the Aritagorgias. I just love those. Aren't they great? Yes, they really are. What's that? I don't know. Yeah, that's the big blob that I thought I saw earlier, really but I don't know. That's a tall one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually it looks like we've got maybe just the stalk of a bamboo on the left there. Yeah. See yeah. those nodes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Loud and clear. Where's the sea star? Where's the culprit? This is crime scene, <laughs> deep sea crime scene right here. Patrick, where are you at? Patrick. 
You know, you could actually do that with the Liebesburn. I just realized the deep sea crime scene. Yeah. That would oh, be perfect trails, for getting people trails. interested in like, you know, the trails left behind in abyssal plains, which yeah. is an area that is historically not, uh, has been, I think, historically difficult to get people interested in. Coming to a gallery on Nautilus I'm excited about this idea. You. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I was, uh, as you were explaining uh, Liebensperin and, and bioturbations, I was thinking, oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah. It's one of, one of the things that helped birth the idea. It's not my idea, it's a idea. Came mm -hmm. out of this control van and all of you contributing online, tuning in, listening in, Nautilus Live, YouTube. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's, it's the it's collective really cooperative brain. Yeah. Hive yeah. mind. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, uh, it's, it's a really unique take on, uh, uh, some some of the uh, things that we're seeing, and uh, yeah, I love that kind of perspective. Makes me rethink some of what I'm looking at too. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, one of the crime scenes is all of those where we saw all of those rocks split apart in mm -hmm. kind of formation, and and uh, wondering, it looked like someone came in and cracked the entrance to some deep mm -hmm. portal. Yeah. In realm. Um, Somebody, you know, something may have. Perhaps <laughs> well, not someone. It but was cooling, cooling something. lava. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cooling lava did it millions of years ago. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we've seen uh, some of these uh, uh, rocks that have uh, contracted enough as they've they've, they've uh, cooled to not just have structural uh, weaknesses within them that you know are likelier to break apart, but things that have uh, actually developed internal gaps along those drainage, just full on cracked. Yeah. So. I bet. Makes it easier to work with in the lab with some of the big ones, so I, I don't complain about that. Oop, fish. Ooh, good spot. All right, call it before we zoom. Halosaur. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not a halosaur. No, I think it's a snapper. Yeah, I think you're right. Well done. Kukui for the touchdown. Fantastic. Those are some of my favorites. I love Sinephobrankids. Sinephobrankid eel. They're true, a true eel, eel, yeah? Or a fish called an eel? <laughs> I'm going to call it an anguilliform, and I cannot remember. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect answer. Oh, that was brilliant. Well played. Biologist, ecologist, well played. Dan and I are sitting over here like, what? I think they are eels. I think they actually are. I find yeah. them in eels other on the... Yeah. Guide. You know, oh, no, to, it's to me, they, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, for folks who are tuning in from Aotearoa or from New Zealand or, or other places where freshwater eels mm. are common, this actually looks very similar to a lot of freshwater eel species that I've seen. Mm -hmm. So funny that it's down in the deep sea. just keeps bouncing off the rocks. <laughs> oh, no. A lot of these fish actually don't have great eyesight. I know. It's <laughs> Can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> So in Spanish, anguila is eel. Anguila. Anguila, mm -hmm. anguila, anguila. like anguila form. Anguila. 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 Oh. Nice. What do we la anguila? Anguila. It, it, it's. Uh, I I know I am a human and I have. You're human. Evolved, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was debatable this morning. <laughs> no apology needed. I've, I've gotten those jokes my whole life. I feel like... <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it in any sort of way. No, it, know, it was I like know. when was uh, someone er it. earlier today <laughs> said, 150 million years, really old. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it is. You know, it's the same sort of... That's the vibe I was going for with that joke. Oh, no. I, I, I love those jokes. No, I, 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 okay, so, correction, I am mostly human, um, mm -hmm. and I'm evolved to live at the surface and at much warmer temperatures than what, uh, Herc's in right now, <laughs> and I, and I'm, I am in a very cozy state right now, and I'm just thinking, man, how do these fish have these metabolisms at this kind of temperature? Like, just, I, I know they're evolved for it. I know they're evolved for it. It's just, I, I cannot bridge that connection. I, I cannot project yeah. myself into that, uh, situation where I know you know you're just comfortable spending your entire life at that temperature. At two degrees Celsius? Yeah, yeah. just yeah. under two degrees Celsius. Fun fact. We're under two degrees Celsius? Just under, yeah, I think oh, so. No way. Um, That's but, pretty dang cold. But fun fact, the waters of the Southern Ocean on the coast of uh, Antarctica 
actually Wait. dropped to negative one, mm -hmm. negative one Celsius. So it was uh, That's some pretty mm -hmm. salty water so there. It, it is? was yeah. very salty and incredibly Seven, beautiful. And yeah. Yeah, wow. I believe it. I love swimming in that. Let's go. <laughs> You know, because it's just I, I keep trying to put myself into, you know, I try, trying to just understand at a deeper level just the deep. how, yeah, how <laughs> how survival works in different environments. And uh, yeah, it's and the thing that strikes me is just how cold it is. Well, and it's interesting you say that because that and the, the cold is really one of those things that these organisms have to really be adapted for. Um, right, yeah. And it's so interesting because there's been a lot of research that has gone on into, you know, how do these organisms survive here? And why do we see such differences between this, you know, the surface or 500 meters and 2,000 meters? Yeah. And what they're finding is actually there's... Um, there's a real gradient, or one of the, there's, there was a historical paper, you know, ages ago that's, that looked into a couple different types of taxa, and the diversity changes between large depth, you know, a large depth zone, and yeah, there's sampling biases and, you know, put issues in, in some of their data, but um, the, the larger, the larger um, pattern showed that there was, you know, pretty, the highest diversity actually occurred um, around like a 1,000 to 1,500 to 2,000 meters for most, like for like, you know, say like fish or snails. I think, I think snails was one of the, you know, gastropods and, you know, was one of their sample organisms. And they looked at this larger area of it and, you know, things have changed, but it's pretty interesting to think about. And one of the, one of the reasonings that, um, you know, makes sense and th and that researchers kind of followed up on is the fact that at about a thousand meters you have to start having some pretty serious adaptations mm -hmm. in order to survive um, because you've got the the change in pressure i mean you've got what what is it every every you know 10 meters you add an, an extra atmosphere or something so it's like it's it's a crazy amount of pressure when you get to a thousand you know meters and then and then you've got, you know, the, the, the serious change in temperature, which is m actually making it very difficult. Oh, we got to count some polyps. That's a small, that's a, that's a. Wow. Good okay, spot. Okay, yeah. One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's less than 15. One, two, three. That might be, um, that might be our number 10. I see nine polyps. Right, okay. So next one, one we two, see we can three, collect. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, this would be number eleven. This is number eleven. Okay. Except yeah. the last one we saw had more than, probably, probably had more than ten polyps. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh my take gosh. A <laughs> That's awesome. That was fun. That would be fun. Yeah. For me, it'd be very very short too. <laughs> So this is not one to sample then? Correct. I don't think so, yeah. Yeah, we couldn't confirm the last one. Oh, okay. Uh, Asako confirms this is uh, uh, this is what we want to collect. Great. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. Yeah. So that one had ten or eleven polyps. Excellent. All right, so. Yeah. So that one was definitely, uh, that was number 10, so we can collect the, a full specimen of the next one. Okay, um, yeah, how about we keep over this uh, this uh, uh, sediment field here, just in case we spot another one on our uh, transit up. Cool. Thank you. So, do not, do not, do not quote me on this, because uh, this is extraordinarily tentative, but um, I'm kind of thinking up here, we're looking at, we might be looking at some inverted topography. Um, inverted topography. Yeah. So this is something that happens in terrestrial settings uh, and uh, is kind of notorious for uh, uh, places that have experienced volcanic activity, like uh, you know, um, uh, lava flows over, say, a, uh, a sedimentary setting. And you see this out west sometimes, where um, at the time of eruption, the lava, like like any fluid, will be following the uh, uh, the lowest um, topographical uh, uh, point, and uh, you know it, it can channelize that way, and then the lava flow it eventually uh, eventually stalls, cools, you know becomes part of the uh, part of the landscape, and uh, uh, sediments around it that have not been covered by lava start eroding, 
and uh, over time you can end up uh, uh, having uh, uh, the lava end up being the topographic high with the sediments around it, you know, so, uh, that were not covered by lava sitting lower than that uh, lava flow. And we're kind of seeing something along those lines here, but I, I can't say for sure if that's uh, what exactly happened. It just seems to be resembling that because I, I don't necessarily know how that works in uh, marine environments. Interesting. So uh, we've we've been seeing a fair amount of this in some spots, uh, and it just been as it's just been kind of rolling around in my head if uh, that might be what we're seeing. So I'm not sure. You know, I I don't see. Uh, you know, we we're not quite seeing enough for me to be super conclusive about this. But it's it's one hypothesis for uh, uh, to explain why we're seeing like some of these stacks of lava with uh, sediments in between. Because otherwise, it doesn't quite make sense that lava would stack on top of itself like that, and then just leave these these uh, these uh, bathymetric lows, uh, like what we're uh, transiting across right now. So, trying trying to take uh, some some of the uh, terrestrial concepts I've learned from various field works and classes and stuff, and uh, uh, trying to figure out how and if they translate to uh, these marine uh, these benthic environments. It's it's a that, that's its own fun little uh, thought uh, uh, fun little uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, I find myself doing that a lot with ecology, um, going through some of the old research that was done for uh, terrestrial ecology and seeing if some of it holds up for uh, the sea floor. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, there's there's relatively so little that we know about the seafloors compared to you know what we can just walk around and map and dig around in um you know get our faces up into and study literally very very closely and uh so we're, we're doing the best what we is can that? i think that could be a teensy tiny i don't know if that's what we're looking for exactly this little oh crap and we have a coral stuck in the slurp no. that's okay <laughs> it looks very different yeah it's not great but it, you know, yeah. At least the uh, sea pens are way something. True. I mean, you know, we could end up with mm -hmm. two in the same jar. This also looks a little bit different, so. Yeah, it does. So I think I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We're just back over it. here signaling with our hands. <laughs> you want to look at it? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that. I, I think it's not what we're looking for, but yeah, we could take it'd a look. Be good to, it would be good to know so for sure. It's teensy tiny. That might be a hydroid or a black coral. Well, it's a tiny it's teensy black coral. tiny. That is. Good it is tiny. It is white. It is the color of the background. Has a dark skeleton. That's uh, that's about what I'm I'm willing to commit to. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving on. Thanks. That's cool. I think we're seeing some dead Walteria back there, and if so, mm -hmm. they're quite long. Yeah, we have been seeing some, I believe. The sediment type has gotten a little bit finer between these rocks. This is more like a sand. Uh, it's probably f it's probably a lot finer than that, um, excluding the uh, uh, basaltic pebbles. Um, Almost it gets like into, a silt. Yeah, it's getting into like the silt clay fraction, is my guess based on some of the gooey things that I have in the lab at the moment. <laughs> um, it's, what, it's, it's, yeah, it's what the hard rock people will call, call calcareous ooze. Ah. Kind of, kind of a mixture of a number of things. I know that word. <laughs> Us biologists talk about calcareous ooze too. I imagine you do, because there's all sorts of interesting biological things in it. Yes, there is. Yeah. Uh, 
It also smells interesting. Oh, Not I'm sure. Not necessarily bad, but it, it does have a distinct scent mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Mm. Yeah. Black freaking. coral sponge. If you are just tuning in, we're right around 2,160 meters on on the Gambia Shoal, uh, another seamount in the northwestern reaches of Papahanaumokuakea. This is uh, the oh. world famous Ripple eight marks. to twelve watch. Mm. Uh oh. Uh, this this Ripple is a uh, this is a, a response of the sediments to a current moving downhill. Yes. Yeah. Making waves. Making waves. I like it. Yeah, it looks too. like there's some in the right corner as well, those waves. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, current. Go sandboarding down this seamount. Mm -hmm. Go for it. I, I loved my set strat class. That was a really fun class. Spent a lot of time working in the lab on uh, set structure IDs. Just uh, So by the end of that class, you you uh, you can pick out ripple marks in your sleep. <laughs> nice. I love looking down through the water in the surf zone, and uh, because of all the turbulence and the action from the waves, the sand is distributed in these incredible patterns, reflecting back up yeah. through the water and scattering the light in all these all these interesting ways. I absolutely love that. One of my okay. favorite parts about surfing. I love it when they get chaotic, kind of where the waves go back and forth uh, really close to shore, and uh, there's yeah. no real rip, uh, uh, coherent direction to the ripples. Yeah. Yeah, that's some of my favorites. Oh, there's a sea cucumber. Hey, little cuke. I think that's the same kind as uh, the swimming one that landed on our porch earlier. Might be. Or at least very similar in color. We're about halfway through our 8 to 12 watch this evening, and uh, we did pitch a, pick up a hitchhiker earlier. I think it is. It looked awfully similar to this holothurian. <laughs> oh, to this yeah. You can oh, see yeah. It. Oh, oh. It's oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh sorry. Oh. That's a pig. That's Privacy. <laughs> Privacy. <laughs> oh, my oh. goodness. Embarrassed him. Dropping ballast. Jeez, Robert, so rude. Right up there. Oh, a do. dumping cuke. <laughs> That's the label on this one. <laughs> Yeah. Sea pig, yeah. Mm. doing pig kind of things. <laughs> Why not? Oh, <laughs> funny. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm sure our, our friends uh, back on the East Coast, going through all these highlights, trying to figure out what to post, looking at all these labels are often uh, <laughs> given a treat. <laughs> <laughs> that was a beautiful highlight name. I really I appreciate that. I really appreciate all your highlight names. They're so creative. Very helpful for people, I'm sure. Dumping cute. And I believe there was one that was called Hot Tub at one point. There definitely <laughs> was, yeah. yeah. Hot definitely Tub. was. Tepid Tub. Oh, I almost had it. I almost had the Tepid Tub filled today. Yeah, I was you were close. making a pretty good case for it today. I think if a little bit more of a push tomorrow, and I, we might be you having a pool party on the definitely got Megan thinking about it. Yeah. Maybe on that transit back. Well, yeah, it's hard to do the tepid tub on the transit, but can, can. Yeah, can get a little sloshy. Yeah, sloshy. That's what makes it fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, all right. Yeah, that'd be doing one way to bombs, go surfing, right? Doing bombs in the tepid tub. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty great timing, little buddy. Nice job. <laughs> you shine like your light on me, this is what you're going to get. Nothing like a well-timed <laughs> dropping of the ballast. That's right. <laughs> oh. Let's see, what's our, uh, what's our summit, what's our summit uh, depth here on this? Uh, Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, well, I think the shallowest we're going is about 1,700? 16, yeah, 1600. Wow. And just 25 nautical miles southeast 
of Koihilani. I know. That's incredible, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, we're very close. That's why we saw some Manuoku. We saw some uh, ferry oh, turns that. today. Yeah. Beautiful white seabirds and saw some flies making it, it out is, from midway. It, it's just uh, so weird when you're out at sea and you're just like, so dude, far from get anything. off my mug. Flies are still here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I haven't seen flies in a while. We also saw some Manuo. Mm. Yeah, we oh, did. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah, oceanic white fish. tips are hanging out with us. Yeah, I walked out this evening and everybody was up on the tepid tub deck and I'm like, yeah, we got a shark. Must be a <laughs> yeah, shark. Yeah, it was beautiful. There were two of them. Yeah. Oh, okay, so at least, least yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty good size. We had two the other day. Do they travel in pairs? Oceanics are fairly solitary, but when there's a food source or ex mm -hmm. suspected food source, you'll see them kind of uh, come together and almost okay. do some social cooperative behaviors to, to uh, support feeding. Ah. They'll, kind of, they'll kind of hunt like pack animals in, in a way. It's pretty impressive to that watch. That is. That's cool. Sharks have very distinct social hierarchies, from my understanding. They Really? They, they have a lot of behaviors to uh, communicate their attitudes towards one another, and they, the more dominant sharks will maintain their position higher up in the water column near the surface, and you can kind of study a whole community, a whole I did not know sharks, sharks had uh, complex social behaviors like that. They do, yeah, incredible. That's, that's, that is awesome. Yeah, I, I feel like that's the kind of stuff that, um, you know, the kind of shark facts that uh, aren't always as well known. No, we need to share more. Because the pop more. culture uh, perception of sharks. Solitary monsters just mm -hmm. trying to trying to kill everything, and that's Which, not, not at all uh, yeah, what they really are. Yeah, they're really not. Not at all what they are. Beautiful creatures deserving of our respect. Apex predators, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But uh, highly intelligent, sophisticated. They've been around 450 million years in these oceans. Say, uh... Should, uh Xenophyophore. Oh, cool. oh yeah, small xenophyophore. And we've got another, um, an ophiroid on top of a <laughs> That is a paragorgian. large ophiroid. I, at first glance, I thought that was several. No, it's one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Native Hawaiians cultivated incredible relationships uh, with sharks through over hundreds of years. They would pass them down in their families. We had whole uh, priestly lines dedicated to uh, caring for and, and relating with, interacting and observing sharks. Many families wow. see their ancestors and in, uh, in individual sharks that come to visit their waters from time to time. And, and they're a really important symbol in uh, Hawaiian stories and mythology, absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Many of the Akua are gods that take, take the form of sharks. One of Pele's brothers, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. I think there's an island uh, in Papahanaumokuakea named with with his name. Important navigator, actually the original mm. the original navigator and voyager ah. uh, to Hawaii. That's right. Maro Reef is actually called uh, Kamoko o Kamoho Ali'i. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Wow. I'd like to know uh, know more of that Mo'olilo and, and how that name was chosen. I know Maro Reef mm -hmm. is legendary for its uh, shark populations. A shallow mm -hmm. reef it, it spans a huge area wow. in the middle of Papahanaumokuakea and is a favorite home to many of our Hawaiian shark species. From the coral polyps to the sharks, all mm -hmm. representative of our elders, mm -hmm. uh, deserving of our attention and our care and our commitment to learn from them, the ways that they have survived in these crazy temperatures, cold temperatures, these depths. Mm -hmm could be turbulent waters. We've had very calm waters, but uh, there are times when the waters around Papahanaumokuakea are just uh, seething and roaring and ripping. Massive, mm -hmm. massive yeah. swells run through here from both the North Pacific and the South Pacific. I'm still blown away 
<laughs> the weather <laughs> we we've timed had. it. We <laughs> timed it pretty beautifully. I can't believe it, actually. Yeah. I'm still. We, we I'm still predicting a surprise. Uh, mm -hmm. A little surprise from Kanaloa on the way home. Ooh. Yeah. Can't let us out so easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had to catch anybody's dinner plate this cruise. Um, <laughs> that's probably. Sometimes. You know, this is my sixth time out at sea. That this is a first. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We have been given. Tremendous gifts, including this dive on Gambia Shoals. Even the dives that, that don't have quite as many oohs and ahs, we're still realizing that um, this is being given as a gift to us, revealing itself to us for the first time. Human mm -hmm. eyes uh, coming from owl, coming from that yeah. realm of consciousness, have never laid eyes on these before, which is just yeah. so mind-blowing when we think about it. I actually have a poem about Po and the Kumulipo. Mm. From Brandy Nalani McDougall. Is that a good time? Yeah, great time. Before the land was tamed by industry, the oceanside resorts and pineapple plantations, before the cane knife's rust and the dark time of sickness, the coming of cannons, the bitter waters drunk, before the metallic salt of blood and the rain emptied into rivers, the winds carved valleys and mountains. Before the earth spurted fire, birthed islands, her churning magma and her inner core of iron. Before the stars dwarfed, their coronas ignited. Before the centripetal petal of spin of galaxies, the unwinding gestures of time and space. Before the light and heat, there was darkness without breath and pull. Pressing the entirety of a universe into a shell, the size of an atomic nucleus, waiting. Oh, Mahina. Wow. And Brandy Chills. McDougall, mahalo. Mm -hmm. To have been invited into that space before there was space time mm -hmm. to come here with you all has been uh, just a tremendous gift and honor. Mm -hmm. Deep sea and deep time travelers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So it's such a challenge to try to communicate what it's like to uh, to move back and forth between the now and the and the the before there was mm -hmm. <laughs> before there was any when, in between between Ao and Po and. I know it profoundly affects all of us in many ways and hard to bring it to you on SPL or a ship to shore or even conversations with family and friends back mm -hmm. home and hard to put into words, but sometimes poetry or, or a song or an oli or just a look at your friends, your new friends, <laughs> um, yeah. captures it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's definitely hard to articulate some of these ocean huaka'i, these explorations uh, and voyages within the deep sea. Um, hey, yo. Oh, you think that's another um, another whale, whale bone? Another whale bone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, just another whale bone from, you know, a million <laughs> years ago. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Wow. wow. Yeah, look at that. Hello, friend. Kopuna. Oh. Mm-hmm. I think we've seen these the last three dives in a row. Is that it? Oh, I don't know. They seem to yeah. be awfully common. Yeah. yeah. I think we uh, we sometimes forget that uh, there was a period of history, 100, 100 years in the making, where whales were almost driven to extinction. And well, these, before are, these are a bit older than that. Though. Well, yeah. I, well, that's my that's my point right. is that uh, before that time, whales were teeming in these oceans. There were there were uh, massive populations of whales. Um, spread How out across all are? the global oceans. I guess we don't know. Mm -hmm. Did they date the ones that we had picked up on the previous cruise? Probably not yet. So I was looking in the Atalanta sonar. Are we like in between two higher points? I believe we are. So there's definitely lava on our left. Uh, 
I've been kind of spinning around here too, so if you haven't got a full sweep, it'll make it look like it all goes around. Mm. Okay, I see. Yeah, because we are going up this ridge, but um, we may not be resolving if uh, like this is the a low okay. on that okay. ridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get you. It's pretty flat around here. Oh yeah, not a whole lot of change from uh, waypoint five to waypoint seven. Yeah, it looks on the topo map like we're just running across a, a football field size, uh, maybe a few football fields as we move between waypoint five and six of pretty much flat terrain. Yeah. Looks like it drops off on both sides rather sharply, but. It's a little more nuanced to it in real life. A little bit, yeah. It's a very wide ridge, not like that narrow ridge we were on in our last dive. Yeah. At least here. And sorry, not sorry, you said Perhaps not as many oohs and ahs, but there is a lot of calcareous ooze. <laughs> there is some, there is some ooze, even a little. Even, even Virginia's a little, gonna slog. Even a little bit of me later. <laughs> uh, I would never dream of that. Geologist jokes. Sure. <laughs> You know, Mike has been occasionally texting me geology jokes when nobody laughs at his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Mike. Hey, I think they're funny. Yeah, but everybody should give them at least a little yeah. chuckle. Yeah. Don't be I such a rough crowd <laughs> universe. Oh, Mike's having a great time reconnecting with his geology. It's excellent. Yeah. yeah. It's a consideration chuckle, yeah. Yeah, you got it. You know, someone's Never. trying. You, you let them, you give them a little laugh. It's good. I love it. If we were all just a little bit kinder to each other, I guarantee the world would be a much better place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mind making people groan personally. <laughs> That's part of the fun, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Oh, another CQ? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This one looks like it's got a little bit of purple on the Yeah. yeah Let's see if he's side. pooping. What's Zoom in. <laughs> 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 That's one good way to get uh, to keep Amber from uh, zooming. <laughs> yeah, we, we spent way too much time looking at that before. <laughs> <laughs> How many minutes of your life have you spent watching uh, Holotherian's poop, Robert? <laughs> More than you can count, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> You know, one of the first times I ever saw a flying holothurian, <laughs> and yet we still zoom in. And the first of course time we do. One of the first times I saw a flying holothurian, one of those purple ones, uh, I was in the Lao Basin in 2017. I was uh, data logging on the Falcor, and uh, uh, Bill Chadwick was uh, uh, running the dive and operating the camera, and he zooms in on this uh, on this holothurian, and I'm I'm just kind of like just taking this whole thing like I'd never seen one before, and. Then I realize I can see through it, and I just go, oh, you can see it's poo. Next thing I know, the camera just zooms all the way back out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? Um, yeah, it's just, clearly they it's weren't just biologists. Yeah. Come on. Well, I think, I think Bill just didn't know how to react to it. <laughs> Their poop can tell a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very important for the ecosystem. It, it is. is. Do we yeah. call it scat? In the ocean, can we call it scat? Yeah, yeah scat. Well, we call it. Um, <laughs> no, actually, we usually college. just call it like fecal pellets or fecal matter. Or Interesting. I've never heard of scat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Never heard of scat, even in yeah. terrestrial. No, no. Um, sorry, I've never heard of scat. I didn't. Oh. You know, ben sometimes I don't scat. always finish my sentences. I apologize. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I, I, I've never, I haven't heard of scat in the deep sea. Benthic uh, scat. Deep sea scat. I might uh, turn that into another gallery. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Or the whole section of the crime scenes. It could be a subsection. <laughs> Public scat. Where the holothurians were. Oh boy. <laughs> I am not mature enough for this conversation. Yes, you are. 
You're exactly the right level of maturity for this conversation. <laughs> the acorn worms. Acorn worms, yeah. Those are. They can let it go, they can huh? Let it go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're bringing you all the science here, whether you like it or not, on Science Party Line. This is the 8 to 12 watch. Holistic approach to science. Holistic approach. It really does come full circle, quite yeah. literally. It, it really does. does. <laughs> 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 Kukui, our I little light. Kukui. Oh, she, we've corrupted Kukui. Oh. Virginia just has a sit between the surrounded. two of us. <laughs> We've got Virginia surrounded. <laughs> Quick, let's find a sponge or a okay, coral. Okay, I'm the laughing again. This is two nights in a row. <laughs> uh, we still got an hour and 30 I think minutes. That's a coral. Least. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, biology. Look, See, biology. you fixed it. <laughs> Things that are alive and don't poop. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they do poop. They do. Oh, they really perfect. Do. Yeah, they do. I've I mean, never seen a coral poop. There's also another sponge by it, too. True. And across the gorge. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It seems like with this limited access to food, you know, the filter feeders would find ways to incorporate pretty much everything that they took in into their structures. Well, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I guess... I guess they, that takes a lot of metabolic energy and they maybe don't want to do that. It's just easier to let it go. But we're, uh, just out of curiosity, you know, how do corals poop? Uh, where they eat. Yeah, right out their mouth. Right oh, out great. their mouth, yeah. Oh. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, we evolved away from that. Yeah. Like millions of years ago. <laughs> 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 yeah. Some of us did. Well, we still do have an embryonic stage where... Um, Some politicians yeah. haven't moved on. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> 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 Not to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, governor. Governor. It's the late night hour. Oh my god, it's beautiful. <laughs> to be to be fair, a lot of great politicians out there doing hard work for there their communities are, and their people and I appreciate mm -hmm. that so much. It's not an easy environment to be in and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there there aren't enough, but there are there are many. There are many, so. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we do have to remember that um, actually there's a, there's a lot of good people out there. And there Absolutely. are. Sometimes it just gets overwhelmed by the loud voices. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes it's just one or two really loud voices that are making you, that are. My bad. I yeah. feel convicted. <laughs> <laughs> I feel convicted. <laughs> <laughs> Val and I. <laughs> oh. That stings, cool. Virginia. That stings. <laughs> she didn't mean just it that way. <laughs> How do you know or I did it? There's the correct uh, answer. <laughs> well played. Well played. Oh, well played. I like it. Mm -hmm. Have a lot of fun with each other, and we do a lot of sciencing, which is fantastic. You wouldn't know it, but we do actually we do, do a lot of science. We do, yeah. Robert can't take it anymore. He's out of here. <laughs> 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 He's leaving. We need you, Aquaman. Don't go. Don't go too far. Oh, wow, that is such a beautiful hemichorallium in front of us. It just, is. Just a gorgeous corallid. Just taking me back to that forest that we mm -hmm. were uh, cruising oh, through. Oh, yeah. That was such a gift. A few first weeks day. Ago. Our <laughs> first <laughs> dive. That was, yeah. That spoiled us. Oh, my gosh. Our first dive. Wow. Yeah, when we came on watch that day, we were uh, in blue water and died. Uh, was that our, our first way. blue water, too? Well, oh. it, it wasn't like a formal blue water. It was like a mid-dive blue water. And we, oh, right, uh, we right, settled right. back down right on top of this uh, this coral forest, and it just didn't end. Yeah, it was incredible. It ended the next watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it, was, it, it well. was stunning. And there's a highlight of that up on uh, the Nautilus Live YouTube channel. That's Ooh, right. Check because it out. I am going to do a shameless plug in here. Yeah, yeah no, it's a great it plug. Check it out. Yeah. You get to hear the voices of our own uh, Mahina and Dan. Oh. Yes, <laughs> What a pleasure to be able to share some of our thoughts, some of our own emotions, our mm -hmm. insights, our mana'o, our ike. Mm -hmm. It's just an incredible gift. And we do take the responsibility seriously, although it's sometimes hard to tell, at least with <laughs> me. 
but uh, we're, we feel like it's such a privilege to be in this control van and, and bringing the deep sea to all of you and mm -hmm. um, we're so appreciative of that so we hope you've enjoyed and, and continue to stay with us and of course carry on there's still a couple expeditions left uh, in this season mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there's still lots to learn lots for the for the deep sea for Kanaloa to reveal and um, I know we'll be uh, we'll be tuning in live from home in the comforts of home, curled up with our cats. Yes, oh, cozy. Uh, oh, yay. Or not cats, in the case <laughs> of me. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, what a what an amazing thing that in this we get to live in a time where this is something that you can do. Yep. <laughs> Pretty remarkable. Wouldn't trade it for anything else. Yeah. <laughs> this life. think about that it's like we are our ancestors wildest dreams oh we're living gosh. out their greatest privileges wow. just to be able to do all of these things to travel to all these places experience new worlds um, ones that they could have only ever dreamed of and it's all all the things that they would have wanted for us as the things that you know we want for our own if we have children we want for our own grandchildren our nieces and nephews all of our loved ones to be able to just aspire and to safely dream and explore. Yeah. We are and the dreams of our ancestors. And, you, you know, we we have a lot of fun on watch, and then we have these moments, and <laughs> regardless of whatever we're talking about, I do hope we're doing our ancestors proud. Mm -hmm. I agree. And all those that will come after. Yeah. Not just, uh, not just our own, but all of the future generations, yes. yeah, all the yeah. more than human future generations that we mm -hmm. owe it to, to uh, take better care of this gift that we've been given. It's a great reminder. Yep. Uh, yeah, that stewardship. Ooh. Bolasoma. Yes, I believe so. Boom. Can I get an honorary degree? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. From the personal University of Val. Yes. I oh, I want to go there. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Oop. Oop. Oh, 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 gentle, gentle. <laughs> wow, pretty resilient. Nice job, little Bolazoma. That was impressive. <laughs> Took on Herc like a champ. Said, back up. <laughs> back up. Yeah, getting back into some of that rubble, but uh, since uh, we're since we've been at a fairly uh, constant depth for a while, I'm still not looking for a rock, but I am always looking at them. Looking at them, <laughs> just not. Got to keep an eye on what's what's there. Just cruising, holo holo. Sometimes holo, you just holo. sometimes you just gotta appreciate the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Have you uh, have you talked to this uh, this uh, watch about what what you do with these rocks. Um, Would you like to share? Sure. I mean, yeah, we 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 mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, uh, rock o'clock this morning. Rock o'clock. Uh, Hannah and I were uh, catching up on uh, getting some uh, the rocks that we recovered from previous dives uh, opened up so we can work on descriptions uh, over the next day or two and uh, get those dried out and packed away. Um, and uh, yeah, that was a really fun morning. We found some, we found some cool stuff, a few different rock types. Uh, have not started the descriptions because, uh, well, sometimes uh, getting a little nap is important too. Cause yeah. we gotta, we gotta, Definitely. we gotta keep ourselves uh, uh, cared for. But yeah, wh what do we do with the rocks? Um, so yeah, once we get these uh, uh, cut up and uh, uh, ready to be uh, shipped back, uh, uh, we uh, we send at least a portion of uh, every sample, uh, every rock sample, back to um, the University of Rhode Island uh, Geological Archive, so that other scientists uh, who have an interest in these rocks can access them. 
And uh, basically this is like a rock library that geologists uh, uh, are able to uh, request pieces of sample material from to do specific kinds of work. So it's an extraordinarily valuable resource to us because, you know, this this way, um, you know, there, there's material from the seafloor that uh, people people like us have already gone out and uh, 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 sampled so that, um, you know, you may not have to if you have a, a research interest in a specific area or looking to, uh, you know, chase down uh, mantle plume traces like uh, like I'm doing. Um, or, uh, or whatever else you want to do. And uh, uh, we also, for some of these, we'll take subsamples and uh, ship them directly to uh, labs that have uh, specific projects going on that we're uh, helping support. Um, and in that case, uh, for example, um, uh, I'm uh, subsampling uh, some material for uh, myself. Can we zoom on this? Yep. Thank you. Sorry. No, no worries. Uh, yeah, um, I'm uh, working on some subsamples for uh, uh, a multi-institution collaborative project that uh, I'm uh, lucky enough to be part of uh, that is working on characterizing uh, the, the ages and the uh, origins of these seamounts for the first time. Because this, uh, this is a relatively understudied area of the Pacific. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're trying to figure out um, what sort of... Uh, what sort of Cretaceous history happened here and how it might translate to uh, some modern volcanism that's occurring uh, south of here um, that uh, we believe has a very high chance of being related. Um, uh, to do that, uh, we, uh, we get uh, argon, argon awesome. age determinations out of these rocks, uh, the ones that are suitable to do that, which give us a, uh, an absolute uh, age on these rather than uh, like a relative age dating. Is this like full can, zoom? Sorry, it I'm going to interrupt. That's okay. Is Operational this, talk. Is yeah. this full zoom? It is full zoom. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, I still have a really hard time hearing you, Amber. Um, I can go really there and show you how to do, do you have my the side button. I actually, yeah, I've got you up on the side. You're up five. Okay. Um, so I don't I'll know. I'll just talk louder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is actually pretty interesting because it, while it looked like the uh, shape of a bamboo, this the the polyps are very kind of shiny. They're short, uh, pointy-ish. I'm wondering if this isn't a uh, primnoid. They're very. They've got the the shine of a primnoid. And none of the banding, which is convenient too. And I think I saw a um uh one of those tinafores. Hmm. Yeah, so, and the polyps are, um, you can see kind of how they're oriented. They're oriented in sort of bands up the, um, each one of these branches. I think they're in threes, which is kind of interesting too. So yeah, and they're somewhat downward facing. Um, and uh, yeah, that's awesome. Probably play a little catch up. Yep. Atlanta. Can I get you to zoom out? Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful zoom. That is a large one. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. oh, I'm glad I zoomed in on it. I was going to make the wrong assumption. Gorgids, hemicoralium, some sponges. Mm -hmm. It's like some small polyopagons. Yeah. Yeah, we've moved out of the like highly sedimented area into this sort of mix of looking like sheet flow ish and some of those pillow uh, maybe. boulders. Seeing a lot of rubble and what looks like it's interspersed with uh, manganese encrusted something. Mm, interesting. It's a little, yeah. No, it's it's a, it's an interesting landscape. I think we're still seeing a lot of uh, rock rubble and, uh, sitting on top of some sediments. But uh, what we're coming up on is definitely an old lava flow. Ah, nice. Yeah. We like those. We do like lava flows. I think I am seeing a lava flow boundary like that. 
That is uh, large. A what boundary? Um, like a like a cooling boundary. So well, that cool. looks like. Um, yeah, kind of getting into low bait territory there. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm seeing a potential structure like that with uh, some radial cooling joints in it. That cooling seems like it's a really important process in uh, in creating some of the topography and also the different types of uh, um, rocks that we see and, and the formations. Yeah, yeah and it, it makes uh, it makes these volcanic structures uh, very distinct mm -hmm. uh, to identify, which is very convenient for us when we're uh, you know when we're uh, uh, looking for uh, igneous samples. <coughs> Yeah, let's see, where are we? Um, Just of boulders everywhere. Interesting little jog in the bathymetry there. Okay. Twenty-one sixty-five meters. Okay. Oh, we got Venerita Gorgia. Oh, that is a big Walteria. Oh yeah, it is quite large. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. We do. We we seem to be going between uh, Walteria grounds and these, you know, uh, Chrysogorgias, Chrysogorgid grounds as well, which is mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah, this kind of hackly appearance here. Uh, these look like fragments that are all in place. Uh, I think we're just looking at the top of the lava flow and we're seeing uh, cross sections of that columnar jointing, that radial jointing that's going inward. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Another paragorgid. Oh yeah, it looks like we've got some more of those live, live Walteria. Er, we've got some more of those Walteria in front of us. Yeah, we're still seeing a lot of barnacles. Um, yeah. This this whole time, uh, uh, taking up uh, residence on these skeletons. We have seen several barnacles today, haven't we? Yeah. That's interesting. I I loved the um the stills that we got from the barnacles we saw on that. The. Uh, the barnacles that were among the crinoid and the hide. The that little mini yeah. community. Yeah. That was really cool. The that was something else. It's always kind of great to see barnacles open. They're so weird looking. Just <laughs> so bizarre. And then to think that they're so bizarre and they're sitting on their heads. You know? <laughs> they're sitting on their heads, yeah. So. They're doing something right in life. I don't know. That sounds, to me, that seems uncomfortable. Have you ever sat upside down? It's kind of yeah. fun sometimes. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable, but, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that a bathy bathies? That's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, similar similar black coral, yeah, as we've seen earlier in this dive. So. Yeah, we've been seeing a few of those every now and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not uncommon. I um, like them. Yeah, I like their symmetry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very pleasant. Um, and the color. Oh, Gold look at this color. monster bamboo in the background. Oh, wow. That is something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of these bamboos can live for a really long time to get to, to really great heights. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's so impressive. Uh-oh. Is that a sea pen? Oh, that's a sea pen. Ooh, yeah. Here I was looking at the bamboo. I, I just, it's I because just saw you're looking at the slightly rocks, different right? color. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was a rock that was a slightly different color, and it turned out it wasn't a rock. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh. 
Good eyes. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, uh, yes. I am being told that if it has less than These 15 nice. polyps, right? then you should collect. Yes. yes. I think we That's what yeah. Asako is telling us too. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to sit down. We're going to take a good look at it. We're going to do some counting. Yay. See if we can't count to 10 or 15 and then Ooh, um, no promises. I know. <laughs> Luckily, we have enough fingers bet <laughs> between all of us. Between all between of us, we might be able to. Oh, <laughs> uh, Sebastian, we appreciate the help. Thank Mahalo, you. Yeah. Sebastian. <laughs> Don't worry, we all still have our fingers. We've been very careful on the ship. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's always, yeah, it's a real fear. It is. It's, it, no, that could really be an issue, you yeah. know? My family looks at me a little puzzled, all of my friends and family, when I came back last summer from a voyage. And they're like, how was it? And I was like, I got all my fingers and toes, both hey. eyes. Hey, that's, that's, that's an accomplishment. A, all right, no? we got one, two, three, four, five. It's definitely not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think we counted counting 11? twelve. I'm thinking yeah. I'm between eleven and twelve. I agree. I'm not getting up to fifteen. Four, five, yeah, six, no, seven, I think that's eight, a nine, good. Um, 10, eleven. Yeah, yeah, it's either eleven or twelve. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, would we be able Here. to try a collection? Yeah. We may end up with a coral and a sea pen together. We had a C pen in the in the bio box previously. Okay. Um, oh, okay. And this one should be heavier than the the Chrysogorgid. I want to move um, a little bit. There's probably a hold fast underneath it that quick. we might be able to kind of pluck up as well, but I'm okay. not sure. It kind of depends on um, the skeleton. Okay. Uh, it actually might be a little too large to slurp. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I'm not. I'm not positive on how it how. Actually, what I don't know is What's how that? wide the slurp is. Um, yeah, I, I think the slurp's had enough of a day. Yeah, so. Okay, I, uh, yeah, um, mm -hmm. sounds good to me. But obviously the, the pilots, I think, um, yeah, I'm know to, more. Yeah, we need to okay, yeah. no worries. Yeah, I'm trying to get around that way, it's not pulling over Great. so much. Yeah, no, you're. Well, no, I mean, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're I, I far said, away. Yeah, oh, dang. We I, need to navigate over there. Yeah, okay. go and pull back. Yeah. Yeah, because it's pulling on me. Oh, yeah. I can as far as I can go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't notice the Atalanta camps. Yeah. It's a beautiful view. <laughs> it is. While they're repositioning, just want to say thank you to all of those tuning in online. We uh, we know that our question and comment feature is not quite working right. So if you're furiously typing away at us and it just seems like we're ignoring you, sort of because we are, but it's because we don't <laughs> have a choice. So uh, I think all of our 8 to 12 watch fans around the world know that uh, we love and cherish your contribution. So. Um, yeah, we're, we're glad you're with us. We hope you continue to furiously type away and uh, also manage to enjoy the deep sea. Yeah, so it looks like it's still right here. Yeah. Yeah. I had lost track of it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was like, I don't know. So. so what's the plan of attack? We're moving back that way right now. Well, I mean, for the sample. Uh, probably putting it in um, the bio box if can. Forward or side? Uh, forward or side. The uh, one that we're not going to open again. Uh, forward. Yeah, we'll just we have to be. We're not opening the side. Uh, we won't. We probably won't open the forward if we decide to put it in here, because both boxes will be filled after. Oh, okay. Pen, yeah. yeah, we just have to be careful opening it because there's a chrysogorgid in uh, one of them. Okay. Wait, there's a. Wait. I, I thought I was told there was a there was a coral sample there in one is. of them. Of, yeah. of a okay. chrysogorgid. Yeah. In the Ford bio box. 
I mean, we could put it in one of the side boxes too. Uh, so that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the the Chrysogorgia will float, which is why we didn't put it in the. Which is that's why we didn't put it, the other one in the front box. We may just have to open it very slowly. Well, if it's in the side. Yeah. Then you get thruster wash, and we can try and mitigate that by turning off the thruster on that side. But but then we spin, right? Well, no. That's a vertical thruster. Okay. 